Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Saturday, December 30th. And I know for so many people, you're just going to relax, chill out, long weekend. Great. I am so on board with that game plan. And if you're the type of person, I think a lot of us do this, we like to use the calendar, the year end, the new year to prompt us to assess where we are. And maybe you're doing that for your financial life. If that's the case, just go to jillonmoney.com and click the contact us button and we would be delighted to assist you in that process. And maybe you're the type of person who likes resolutions. That's great. For all of you, I have a really fun treat. We are going to re-air an interview that I conducted with Dan Pink. And this was originally recorded back in 2019. So this is the pre-pandemic times. But I really enjoyed Dan's book. I like him so much. The book is called When the Scientific Secrets of perfect timing. And it's a really good book and a great interview to resurrect for this time of year. This was actually a very long interview because I really like Dan. He's such a good writer. He's a great talker. So we're going to present to you today, tomorrow, and on New Year's Day, little snippets of my interview with Dan Pink. Here is part one of bestselling author Dan Pink. Let's start by explaining sort of the the natural cycle of how we as human beings are programmed. So talk about that and how this might have uh, encouraged you to dive deeper into the topic. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, it, the reason I dove deeper into it was in part for that for that reason. I was frustrated because I was making all these decisions in my own life and making them in a haphazard way. And while I'm a little bit messy, I'm, I'm pretty anal retentive about decision making. And so I like to make decisions based on evidence. It didn't exist. I looked around and realized there's this incredible body of science out there that gives us clues about how to make these decisions. And so one of the cornerstones of all of this is exactly as you say, there is this pattern of the day that happens inevitably. And, and to simplify it, it there, we, 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 each day we move through a peak, a trough, and a recovery peak trough recovery. Most of us, about 80% of us, move through in more or less that order. Peak early, trough in the middle, recovery later in the day. People who are night owls, who have a, what's called an evening chronotype, much more complicated, actually much more interesting people. I'm not one of them. Nor I. Um, but they tend to hit their peak much, 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 much later in the day. And what we know um, from this mountain of research is that our brain power doesn't stay the same throughout the day. It changes. And in each of those periods, our brain power is different. And so finding the right thing to do in each of those segments allows us to do more work and better work. When you started talking about sort of the, the night owl versus the lark, yeah. there was also a third category. Sure. And, and can you talk a little bit about sure. that? Yeah. So, so this is something that's called a chronotype in a field called chronobiology. Uh, and it's Which one, is like you'd like to whip out chronobiology at your next cocktail party, right? Like, let yeah, me tell you about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really it's really simple. Chrono time, biology, study of life. It's basically scientists who study our 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 rhythms essentially. Yep. And um, what 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 we know is that each of us has different types. So, so we we talk about morning people and evening people, but and that's not folklore. That's actually real science. And here's what we know: fifteen percent of us very strong morning people, larks. About 20% of us, very strong evening people, owls. About two-thirds of us, though, are in the middle, uh, what I call third birds. And third birds, I mean, to oversimplify, you can think of kind of owls and non-owls, really, in, in how these patterns go. Most of us go peak trough recovery, but about, you know, a fifth of the, of the population has very, very different rhythms and very, very different internal schedules. The point of kind of understanding what kind of person you are is to make sure you are working around those normal cycles absolutely, and not putting yourself in a position where you are forced to do something at a time where you may not be, uh, you know, obviously at your optimal cognition and energy and all of that. A absolutely right. And, and, and what's interesting about that is that there are different kinds of cognition that work differently in each of those periods. So let's take that peak. The key characteristic of the peak, which again, for most of us is earlier in the day, for owls in the evening is that we're high in, vi in what psychologists call vigilance. Vigilance is just our ability to bat away distractions. And so that makes the peak the ideal time for doing um, heads down, focused work, uh, uh, analyzing data, uh, uh, writing a report, those kinds of things that require that kind of intense in intensity. Now, what's interesting is that the recovery period, which is, which is later in the day for most of us, late in the afternoon, early in the evening, 
Our mood is high, but our vigilance is not. And that makes it a good time for things that require some kind of mental looseness. So iterating new ideas, brainstorming, certain kinds of creative problem solving. And so you should be doing your more kind of looser, creative, iterative stuff in that, in that peak period. And, and, and what we know is that, is that time of day matters in human performance. If you, if you look at, let's take a typical workplace, all right? And we know something, let's talk, let's talk about the statistical concept of variance here for a moment, okay? Variance. So you've got a workplace and there are a thousand people there and you plot them from bad to good. Who's bad and who's good right. in, in terms of their performance. And how do you explain why some people are better at their jobs and some people are not? Some people are smarter than others. Some people are more conscientious than others. Some people work harder. Some people have more social advantage, whatever. But what this research tells us is 20% of the explanation of that variance in performance is time of day. And that's something we can do something about. I can't make myself smarter, right. but I can actually do the right work at the right time. And so when you look at that, let's just say someone's listening and they have got a team of 50 people, okay? And what is the way to take that knowledge and structure a day potentially differently? Yeah, so it's a, great, it's a great question. I think what's interesting about this is while we have general patterns, there is considerable individual variation. So a lot of the things that you see in like life hacking sites, everybody should get up at 4.30 in the morning, is nonsense. It, it doesn't work that way. Mm. Um, and, and so each individual collection of people is going to be a little bit different. But what I would do, let's say you got 50 people, I actually would want to know their chronotype. I would want to know who are the larks, who are the owls, and who are in between. And it would also depend on what I was doing. So let's say I had a, um, let's say I was running an accounting firm, okay? Unlikely, but let's say I was <laughs> running an accounting firm. And I had, 30 of my people were, were larks, okay. all right? Um, or 30, or larky at least. Um, with those folks right there, I would not put them in a staff meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning. I would not lard up their calendars with meetings during the morning because I know that that's when they're highest in vigilance and that's when they should be doing their heads down accounting work, you oh, know, auditing a financial statement right. or, or doing that kind of thing. So I would leave them alone for that. If I, if I wanted to come up with, say, uh, let's, hey, guys, let's uh, figure out a way to do, um, what's a, a new line of business that we could create? I would have that conversation generally later in the day. Mm -hmm. um, now, I would also see who my owls are, if I have any owls. And for the owls, what I would do is essentially leave them alone and let them tell me when they are at their best. And if that owl wants to do her audit at 9 o'clock in the evening and she's not in her chair at 9.30 in the morning... I'm good with that. Right, just get the work I done. I want her to do the work that w when she does it. The other thing that I would also do is I would encourage them to not start their day by clearing out their email. Ah. Uh. Because that's the kind of th and, and, and listen, I'm a sinner here. I, I'm, I've been saved, but, I, but I'm a sinner because I, I'm a- <laughs> You're a convert, baby. I'm a writer. And so, and I'm more of a lark than an owl, much more of a lark than an owl. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would sometimes come to my office, at, you know, 8.30 in the morning and- First thing I would do is answer my email. Okay, so it takes me an hour to you know clear out my email, and I have this delusion that oh I've cleared the decks. My right sp head is free. Okay? Right. So it's nine thirty, and it's like oh wow I'm kind of hungry now. Like maybe like, I'll go get a bagel. All right. Then I come back, and then you know four sports highlight reels later it's lunchtime, and I haven't done my most important I haven't done my most important work. You're writing. My writing, okay? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, as a, well, you know this, as mm -hmm. a Jill, as a writer, anytime you sit down to write, at that moment, the universe begins conspiring for ways to distract you. Oh, yeah. And so you want to do it at your, at your highest vigilance. So I actually changed my way. So when I, on writing days, mm -hmm. I go into my office, still at 8.30, because I'm not an insane, you know, start working at 6 o'clock in the morning, Lark. What, what, you know what I do? What? I don't answer my email. I don't mm -hmm. even open my email. Mm -hmm. I don't even bring my phone with me into the office. I give myself a quota of words and say, during this period of peak vigilance, Dan, you have to crank out these number of words. Wow, that's fascinating. And I then did you do it the next day and the next day and I'm, the next day and the next day. I'm really interested in this because I think that there are so many of us who are juggling lots of different tasks that we have to do throughout a day. And so what you're saying is work to your strengths. Do this task in the morning. And this is so weird because, like, you're saying this, and this actually happened to me yesterday. So I have to wake up and check email just to make sure I don't have to be on the air, right? Sure. So, which is annoying, but okay. Sure. But I, I put it aside. 
I shut down my email and I cranked out like three scripts and two columns. And two hours later, I was like, oh, my God, I'm done. And I took the dogs out for a walk after. It was like beyond fabulous. That's how that's how you do it. And and the thing about email, I mean, like, let's go back to my accounting firm here. What I might want to do is tell my accountant, my Larky accountants, you know what? Check your email. Make sure an important client hasn't contacted you. That's right. You know, some kind of just like basic maintenance and things like that. But you want to do your heads down focused work in your peak. You want to do your iterative work during your recovery. And then this trough period. Yeah, let's talk about that. What do we do then? It's a terrible time of day. I hate it. Well, I I am the ultra lark because I wake up between four and five. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But sometimes I have to be on the air. So it's different, right? right? right, right. But but like, I, I, you know, so I generally wake up between four and five. And I looked at like I looked at your little schedule yeah. there, your graph, and I sort of okay, I know where I am. Yeah, so you're pretty larky. I'm very larky uh-huh. anyway, and it's a long day. So yeah. what do I do in the trough? What when, when yeah. I'm kind of like I can even feel it, like in I physically feel that trough. Uh, we all do. Most of us don't acknowledge that though, and most of us say, oh well, uh, you know, it's some of us are like, oh, it should it doesn't matter, or oh. It's a, a sign of moral weakness. Yeah, let me power through it. Right. I'm oh. like, no, nah, I'm done with that. I okay. don't want to power through anything. Powering through is a really bad idea. Mm. All right? We tend to th- and, and, and and unfortunately, somehow, especially in our business culture, we've been conditioned to believe that that's how you get more work done, that's how you get better work done, that powering through is also morally virtuous. Mm. And it's nonsense. So what you should be doing during that, that, um, that, that trough period? One- your, your work that doesn't require as much brain power and creativity, answering your email, uh-huh. filling out your expense reports, mm-hmm. doing that kind of mundane stuff that you have to do. The other thing that you should be doing, especially in the trough, is taking more breaks. There's a whole science of breaks that's been emerging. And what it tells us is exactly that powering through is a bad idea. Taking breaks is a good idea. We should be taking more breaks and we should be taking certain kinds of breaks. And what are those types of breaks? Well, the, the best breaks, and there's some interesting research on this, the best breaks are social rather than solo, which surprised me uh, as an introvert. So this is true even for introverts. Uh, the best breaks are, are moving rather than being stationary. The best breaks are outside rather than, than inside. And this is important. The best breaks are fully detached rather than semi-detached. So a break isn't having intense conversations about what's going on in the office. It's actually being detached. This gives us a fairly simple recipe. So I'm convinced that if everybody in America took each afternoon, scheduled a 10 or 15 minute walk outside with someone they liked, talking about something other than work, leaving their phone behind, you would have, I actually think you would have a measurable boost in productivity, and I think you would have a measurable boost in job satisfaction and engagement. If this conversation with Dan Pink was sparking some other questions for you, maybe you need some guidance, some help, some coaching, just give us a holler. Go to JillOnMoney.com, click the Contact Us button. Of course, let us know if you would be willing to come on the air. You can come on this program. You can just write us an email. You can come on our brand new video program, which is called Jill on Money, powered by The Compound. Check it all out. All of our content does live on the JillOnMoney.com website. And uh, we'd love to have you join us. So uh, without further ado, please remember to subscribe to Jill on Money on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts and lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 